When I first began drawing buildings, I couldn't draw people. So I had to have scenes that avoided them. So I did lots of buildings looking up and looking up and looking right up. Sometimes I would draw scenes looking down or straight across even. In fact, I began to draw almost any subject as long as there were no people in it because I couldn't draw people. But as I drew more and more, it became harder and harder to find photos from my travels that didn't have people in them. And so eventually I decided I had to start to include people as long as they were very small and not very obvious, such as in this scene in St. Stephen's Cathedral in Vienna, or here in St. Eustace in Paris, or here next to the Vienna State Opera. Eventually, I even came to include cars, which I couldn't draw either. And while I avoided putting too many of people or cars into my drawings at the start, eventually I gave up and realized that people were as much part of the streetscape as the buildings. And I just had to make an effort, more of an effort to draw them. And I discovered I'd been thinking about it all wrong. I'd been focused on trying to draw a figure and that was making it far more complicated and less accurate for me in my drawing. And then I worked out a different way of thinking about drawing the figures in my streetscapes. And that made all the difference. And that's what I'm going to share with you in this video. Firstly, I'm assuming most people watching this video are not watching it for a figure drawing lesson, but we want to draw streetscapes and recognize that people are an important part as a subject of our streetscapes. They're what I call the support acts of our architecture. So I just want to make a few key observation points about how figures sit into the streetscape. And the most important one is that is that perspective issue where if the ground is flat and the person viewing the scene or the camera that's taking the photo is at the same level as the people that all the heads will line up in a straight line. Now, obviously people who are closer to us are larger. What changes as the figures get smaller is where their feet are. So the further back they are, and therefore the shorter the figure is, the higher their feet are. So the closest figure will have their feet closest to us and then moves up slightly for a figure slightly further away higher again for the next closest figure and then on and on and on and you may not even be able to see it but there are some tiny figures here on the far side of the street in front of the chateau in Saint Germain on Lye and their heads also there's one of their heads there also lines up exactly with the others to illustrate a further point on this I'll use this crowd scene from the Tuileries Gardens in front of the Musée de Louvre if we put an eye level line through this gentleman on the right's head, we see that his female partner, her head is below, and that's simply because she's shorter than he is. And so we have to allow for this eye level head alignment with the fact that some people are taller and some are shorter. In fact, it's the average height of the heads that will form this straight line. If we look right over here, we can see, in fact, there's a figure who basically, basically the whole figure is under the headline and that's because that's that's a boy and so he's significantly shorter. So again children we have to allow for their smaller size and the smaller the younger the child the smaller they will be and the further away from this eye level line. The other thing to note is that we have a crowd of people further up the back and their heads go up and down, up and down in a zigzag and don't follow the same principle at all. Well, that's because we're not on the same level as them. They are higher than us and we're looking up at them. And what actually aligns here is where their feet are. And therefore, according to their height and how close they are to us, their head level will vary. And that's why there appears to be no, no great um, system to where their heads are. So that's a different principle because this alignment of heads only applies when everyone's on flat ground and the observer or the camera is on the same flat ground. To find our figures to draw, we're actually going to go to Vienna and outside the Hofburg Palace. And here we have this great scene of, of people on the street. And we're going to grab this bunch of people over on the left here to look at how we actually think about them and draw them. Well, 
Let's go. Well, as in most things I draw, it's always best to start with the foreground. So we have this gentleman on the left and skulls always take up more space than you think. And they're particularly tricky when there's no hair to hide them. But as you know, if you've listened to many of my videos, I keep putting the lines in until there's one in the right place because the brain will favor that. Then it's a case of, of looking at key points in a figure for me. So it's the waist, the hips, the knees, the elbows. I try, once I've got the head in place, I try to position all of those key spots in relation to the head. How do they line up with the head? So I'm not trying to draw an arm, I'm trying to place an elbow in the right place, trying to place a knee in the right place. And then I really just join them up. Feet are always a bit tricky. It's important to, to look at the foreshortening. They change enormously according to the angle you're viewing them from. I put the uh, gentleman's partner in next, obviously. And it's the same sort of thing. I, I place the head in roughly the right position. I actually placed it a little bit too high, but that just means she's going to be slightly taller in my drawing than she is in real life. Now, I don't like to get caught up in trying to do things such as shape legs, because for me, that's where you're starting to draw figures. And normally I wouldn't draw figures this large in any architectural street scene. But I, I, I try and add just a little bit more detail there to the shape of the legs than I would normally do. Now, this figure to the rear of, of the lady, again, I make the head just a little bit too big, which means that the whole figure will need to be larger. And I finish up making her feet a little bit lower down too because her legs are just too short there. The important thing though is that we keep the figures in the right proportions as figures. And it doesn't matter if in my drawing I've in effect made these figures look a little bit closer because they're larger. Because it doesn't really matter where they place as long as together as a unit they look fine. In fact it's easier to draw them further away and as I said normally I'd be drawing these uh, much smaller than I'm drawing them now. But again, you can see how I, I seek to position the waist, elbows. Once I've drawn the head, I align all of these other joints and parts of the body with the head. And clothes are great because you can use them to hide lines that aren't quite in the right place. And I also use color for that. So if I get the lines fairly accurately, I'll, I'll leave that item of clothing light but if I bodge the lines and I've got quite a few wrong ones I'll add uh, just some line to make it a, a dark item of clothing which also hides my mistake. Don't forget these are just a support act in a larger architectural drawing and so the focus isn't going to be on them and I think the important thing is is that if something's not quite working out the more attention we the more line we put to it the more we're going to actually draw attention to it from the, the, the people looking at the, at the drawing. So in a sense, once we think, no, that's not worked, best often to leave it alone, particularly if it's, if it's up the back, uh, because it is, it is the effect of the crowd of people we're after. We're not trying to identify people. There are no portraits here. And, and I think that's an important thing to, to know. As you can see, I'm just lengthening a few of the legs here, which can be done when the figures are further back easily enough. And that makes their proportions a bit better. And I decide just to add this, this guy in the front, just to show you the impact of, of including a closer figure walking in a different direction. Again, I'm not trying to get a, a, a portrait. I'm not trying to represent the physique of this gentlemen I'm, I'm just trying to draw a credible male person walking away and again I stumble a bit over exactly the right proportions for the pants I make his legs way too short and in fact that foot there that you can see on the right hand leg is about to become an extension of his pants and I add the foot and you can see how that works much better and so always be looking out for for ways that you can um, modify what you've done, even though you've drawn it in ink. And I think when we look at this group of people now, it works really nicely with that foreground figure walking into a different direction. And look, I'm happy with how these have turned out for what they are. Now don't go, I've got two quick 
great tips when you're drawing people. Hi, I'm Stephen Travers. When you go to draw the heads of people in the midground or some distance away, don't draw a circle for the head. It's really easy and tempting and seemingly natural to do, but draw an oval because that's the more natural shape of a head when the head is being when the face is being seen front on. If it's a side on view, then you need to have it wider than than an oval. Okay? So that's the first thing. My second tip is that unless the person is really very close, closer than I actually usually like to draw people anyway, I never draw a neck. I draw the head and I draw the shoulders in and I just float the head above the shoulders. And that seems to work incredibly well. No one's ever noticed that I don't draw necks. And every time I try and draw a neck, it's either too long or too short and it looks awkward. But if I just float the head, it always seems to look just perfect. I mean, sometimes there are scarves or it's from the back, there's a hoodie or there's hair covering. But if it's a front on view and there, there isn't any winter wear to uh, disguise the neck, I just float the head and it always works well. Look, if you don't like drawing people, if you think you can't do it, give it a go. Don't think of them as figures. Don't try and draw figures. Try and, and connect the various key points, the elbows, the knees, the chin, the top of their head, the waist, the, the feet in the right proportion to each other. Start with the head and then align everything in relation to the head and then connect those key joint areas up and see how you go. Most important thing, of course, is to have fun. Bye-bye.